Hey, welcome back to the Midday Reset. My name is Antoinette and we are testing out a new format here where we're seeing how we do with some video podcast episodes. Probably won't do this for every single episode, but we're trying it out to see if we can reach some more people and spread more of that goodness and light that we love so much over here at The Reset. And my very first guest for my very first video podcast was none other than author Shannon Kaiser. So stay tuned to hear some of the insights that she shared with me and keep shining. Okay, hi Shannon. Hi, it's so good to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining me. And so I figured we'd just have a little conversation, chit chat about some of the topics that I know that you like to cover and uh, leave the people listening and watching with some gems. Awesome. That sounds great. Okay. So clearly I've, I've read through, um, I'm finishing up with Joy Seeker right now, which I'm absolutely loving. And then I um, have read through Find Your Happy a couple of times. And every time I always notice very clearly that there is a transition that's taken place with the author, with you. Um, and I know that I experienced a real shift in my thinking where I became empowered by the idea of creating my own happiness and joy. And so I, want, I wanted to see if you could talk to me a little bit more about what that transition was like for you. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful question. And it's nice that you can capture in the book. Um, so I gave you the advanced copy of Joy Seeker. So you're like reading through it. And it's a very special time in my life because when I wrote it, I actually went through a, a devastating loss. I had lost Tucker, who's one of my best friends, he was a dog. He was a rescue dog, but the reason he was extra significant is because I adopted him when I was diagnosed with clinical depression 10 years ago, and I was suffering from eating disorders and stuck in um, a really dark place. Um, just, I hated myself. I was addicted to drugs. So when that dog came into my life, I really feel like he saved my life. Um, what happened for me is the transition was when he actually passed away and, and died, I went through another grief moment of, it was desperate depression. I fell into depression again. I said, wait a second, I'm a self-help author. I write books. I'm a life coach. I've done all the work. Why do I still feel this way? And I think so many of us do that when we start to shift into a, a, an empowering place where we feel like we are worth showing up for ourselves stuff comes up. And then what I don't want to happen, which is what happened to me, but for so many of us, we put on more shame and guilt, like we're not doing it, we're not moving, um, we're doing it wrong, life is, is happening to us instead of showing up for us. And it's a perspective shift. And so I think for all of us, when it really does come back to feeling empowered from within and knowing that we can be our own hero. No one else is going to do it for us, no matter what, no matter what. And so it comes into a place of showing up for yourself because you know that life is short and you know that you're worth it. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I experienced this moment where I was like, I just don't want to be a victim anymore. You know, like, I don't want to just sit here and act like, oh, all this stuff is just happening to me. Like, I want to take an active role in what happens in my life. And so I'm going to make some steps to try to do that. And so um, I know that that was really, that's been empowering for me. I mean, it's been a lesson that I've had to learn over time, you know, because when you first step out and you're playing in the arena and you get hit, it's like, oh man, that's so scary. And you just want to shrink away. And um, so yeah, I think that that is really good encouragement to keep people continuing to, um, move forward and just lean into the possibilities and the wonder rather than freaking out and being scared. I totally agree. And I think that's really what it is. It's about leaning in because what we've been living, uh, for the, for most of us, isn't really what brings us joy. I find that so many of us are very stuck and we're also in a place I know um, clinical depression is a really real thing. Drug addiction, having abuse or situations in the home, these are very real things. But I do know that our perspective on how we look at them is really what can, can change our whole entire experience. You know, there's people who are, are um, in circumstances, but they feel free in their mind and they have self-love. That is more powerful than um, 
continuing to stay in blame and shame and, and feeling the victim. So what I love that I hear you say is I just got sick of being the victim I too felt that way. I, w I felt like there's got to be a better way. This is exhausting. It really is exhausting to blame and point fingers and feel like you are stuck forever. Um, it's important to know that we all can lift each other up um, by being there for each other. So I love being here with you because it is about connection. And that's the key thing I realized I was missing. I didn't feel like I was connected to society, to the world. I never felt like I fit in. Um, and it's interesting because I realized I wasn't accepting myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't have a connection to myself. And so I wrote a whole nother book on that called The Self-Love Experiment, where I learned how to become my friend. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I always tell that to my friends now too. I'm like, yeah, I love to learn how to be my own best friend instead of trying yes. to be somebody else's best friend. Yeah. Yeah. So as you create your work, such as the books that you write and the affirmations that you have, what sorts of things inspire you? So for me, it's interesting because my books, it's just been a pattern of my own life where I need to be out in the world. So most of the books I write, I'm, I'm in a place that's not my home. <laughs> I'm based in Portland, Oregon. And what inspires me is new change and connection, growth, and, and really living life. I'm inspired by everything, by humanity, by my clients, by connecting with you. Um, I'm always thinking. I think a lot. And I don't think I, I think a lot, but I've had a lot of people tell me I think a lot because I'm philosophizing in my mind of new ways to be in the world that are more grounding, more joyful, more fun and connected. Um, it's just how I see the world. I see possibilities instead of limitations. And to me that that turns into writing. But every book that I've written has always, it's interesting because I think um, a lot of us will, will read books or show up and we feel like, like maybe we have a dream in our heart to write a book. And I see it a lot of the times where people will write for other people first. And I've always written the books for me because it's something I needed to learn or I was personally going through. And then I put it into a book and put it out in the world. And I'm so thankful that people enjoy it and love it. So. <laughs> yes. It goes a long way for letting people know that they're not alone. You know, that's something that I always try to emphasize on this podcast is that, you know, no matter what kind of crazy, ugly thoughts and ugly feelings you're having right now, I promise you're not the only person um, you, there's other people who have been there or who are going through it. Like you don't have to go through that by yourself. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. Cause I know when I was in the dark place of feeling like I, I had thoughts of what's the point I was suffering from my addictions and eating disorders and depressed. I felt so alone. I didn't know how to reach out to people. I had best friends who were, who were there for me and I couldn't even tell them that I, I was totally ashamed of being who I was. And I think that the most important thing, something clicked with inside of me, you know, where I had that inner voice that said, it's exhausting to be someone you're not. Follow your heart. And that became this pivotal moment of my life. This was 10 years ago and, and I recognized what does my heart want? I've never really given myself permission to, to live that way. And that's what led to becoming a writer, becoming a coach and, and working with people through just sharing my stories of, of what I've been through, but also connecting because we are not alone. And every time I go through something, I write a book about it and it turns into like a whole bunch of other people on the planet are going through it too. So the books do pretty well, which is amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. So awesome. Um, so I guess that kind of answers the next question that I had because I was going to ask you if there was anyone in particular that you were trying to reach when you set out to motivate, but it kind of sounds like your writing almost serves as a reminder to yourself based on the, the lessons that you've learned and, you know, all of the ways that you've grown. I think that's such a good question though, because I am very mission driven. And for many years in my career, I was so focused on, I knew I, knew I needed to reach people. And at first it was people who were really depressed and anxious because I had just gone through that. And then the audience kind of opened up and shifted into feelings, releasing your self doubt and finding self love and knowing that you can be who you're meant to be. So each thing that I go through as I grow, I find that the audience will grow and they grow with me, which I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you're here. I'm so thankful people are enjoying the books. 
But I had to, at some point in my career, it was driving me batty, like crazy, focusing on others. And that's part of what the joy seeker journey is. That's part of what I find is the biggest lesson we can all learn. We're showing up and trying to do things for others at the sacrifice of ourself. And what we're then doing, and so many of us do this, is we're living for the world. We're living for what the other people in the world, culture, society, trying to fit into a world that we're not made to fit into. None of us, no matter where you are, because the world is a very boxed situation. You have to look a certain way. You have to feel a certain way. None of us fit into that, but they will keep manufacturing and telling us that. So we're going to keep feeling off. So the fix is to just be who you are because that is enough. And so I learned that in my journey. So now I got to a place, especially with Joy Seeker, as you're reading it, it might feel different because there was a freedom within me to just express myself as I feel because that gives you as the reader and anyone who's on a Joy Seeker journey to express themselves because we want to rise up together and feel the joy within. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So what's been your favorite lesson learned from your journey so far? So it's interesting because I often ask myself, what lesson am I going through? I truly believe that all things in life are lessons and we can learn from them. And when we do learn, we can move into the next level, the next phase, the next lesson. So one of the biggest blessings that Joy Seeker, I went on this journey and, and dedicated a whole year to joy. And as I did that, I didn't have for sure where I was going in mind, but the, the biggest gift was number one, I released all expectations. I think a lot of us have expectations on how life is supposed to be or how it's not fair for us. And these expectations build up our reality. And there's a part in the book, Joy Seeker, where I talk about removing the expectations and the demands we put on ourselves. Yeah. Removing the demands, you know, this pressure. Um, so freeing myself. So now, I, like I used to be so always in the next thing. I'd be sitting here with you, but I'd be thinking about all the things I'd have to do today. Oh, or I would never be able to be present. The biggest gift that and the biggest lesson I've learned is how to be present because this is all we have. So my relationships are deeper. I feel more authentic. I feel more connected. My writing, I feel, has become better because it's more honest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the greatest gift is just showing up for yourself and letting the lessons reveal themselves. For me, it's being present and releasing expectations. Yeah, awesome. And I love that the greatest gift that you got was the present. That's sweet. <laughs> I was it thinking about that as you were saying it. I was like, oh, it's a present. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't want to give away the end of the book, but you're on your way there. <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm so excited. Um, okay, so if you could tell everyone on earth one thing, we're going to assume that you can translate it over into a bunch of different languages and everything. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. What would you tell everyone? I would say to be who you really are instead of who you think you need to be. And then on top of that, I would say just be what is in your heart. Do what you really, truly want to do. Because what I have found, and from my own um, teaching and my experience um, working with the teachers that I've worked with, is if every single person on the planet followed their heart, then every single one of us would not only be happier, we'd be putting more love in the planet, but there would not be hate, shame, judgment, or blame, because that's not really from a loving place. Most We're humans that really want to love and accept people. So when you do what you love, Every single person on the planet will actually kind of fit in together where we're working in society together. There's no more judgment, no more shame, no more blame, no more I'm better than you. None of that because that's not humanity. That's manufactured here on, on it's kind of a manipulated thing. I understand a lot of people are feeling that, but what it really comes back down to is just be who you are unapologetically and let the chips fall because the other people, if everyone did that, all of what we go through now, the hate, shame, blame, racism, all of it, I, I truly feel it would disappear. Okay. That's a utopia though, right? So yeah. that's the world. We don't live in that world right now. So I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm working towards that with the books and the, because the more we do, like you've said it before we got on the podcast interview, 
like you feel more empowered in your life and that's changed your life. So now that's helping your children and your community. And as we keep lifting ourselves up, it's our responsibility to do that so we can help each other and uplift everyone together. Yeah, we're definitely all in this together. And um, from the standpoint of a parent, I really do feel like whatever's next for us as a people and for the future generations, which includes my children, I think the only way that they're going to be able to succeed is to stay kind and stay authentic and just stay 100%. You know, I think that the only way to really solve what's happening right now is for people to become more empathetic, more compassionate, and, and not be afraid to show who they truly are. Because when people, when people get upset, they get jealous or whatnot, it's usually because they, they see something that they feel like they can't have. That's so cute. <laughs> they see something that they think that they can't have or, um, you know, they think it's an experience that they are somehow not entitled to, they are not worthy of, you know, and, and really that's just coming from a place of fear and, you know, the, the comparisons that we often do that our, our culture makes us do. Um, I think you really, you kind of touched on such an important part. The comparison is one of the biggest blockers to joy, to feeling empowered, to feeling fulfillment, and even just feeling better. We compare ourselves and we constantly look outside of ourselves. And I was doing this in my own life. I was comparing myself to other people who were further along in their careers. We compare ourselves to other um, groups of people who, who may, you know, kind of be in a situation. And then what happens, as you said, we feel like we're not good enough or something's wrong with us or we are never going to be like them. And the goal is not to be like them. It's to be who we are because that diversity and that, that contrast in life is what gives us permission to feel a full life. But the thing about comparison, we can use it um, to bring us down or we can use it as an opportunity to really rise up. And so um, I talk about in the Joy Seeker, and maybe you got to that part where if you see something you like, it's almost like showing a flashing red, like a, a bright light on it. I think Glendon Doyle, who's an author, said, comparison is showing you what you want. That's why you're feeling guilty because you don't have it. It's revealing something that you don't want. So instead of going to, oh, that will never happen for me, or I, I can never be like that, simply say, thank you, you know, universe, God, whatever the higher power is, or thank you, true self, or thank you, you know, situation for showing me what is possible because I would not be able to see it or recognize it if it wasn't a possibility for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that it would be um, something we can all tap into of maybe it's not exactly like that because everyone's on their own journey, right? But pieces of it. So maybe someone's getting more recognition or someone got a promotion instead of you. That's on its way to you. If you have that mindset, it can help. Right. Right. Yeah, I've sort of had to start working on stopping myself when I have that feeling of like, oh, this person's been doing this for less time than me and they have more, more oh recognition. <laughs> yeah, you know, they got more. And, you know, I've had to get into the habit of stopping myself and being like, wait, hold on. But are you mad at them for having more or is it just you just want more? Because we can figure out some things to do so you can get that too, you know, but it took me yeah. so long to get to a point where I would stop doing the shame dance over stuff like that. Like I, I did it when, um, before I became a mom, I remember I wanted to be a mom really bad. And every day I'd log on to Facebook and I'd see like a new pregnancy announcement. Totally. Yes. <laughs> and I know that feeling, crazy. right? And you're like, oh. yeah. But then it sounds like you were able to shift to say, oh, this is possible for me. I, I'm seeing it as an opportunity. I have a really good friend who calls it driftwood. She used to say, oh, that's driftwood. I was like, I don't understand. You say that all the time. And she said that it's like, she said, I think it was Louise Hay or someone had said that in the, in the spiritual community. It's she wanted a relationship. So she'd see people at the park kissing. She'd go, driftwood, you know, a, a guy opening a door for a woman, driftwood. And I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? She said, it's, it's like drifting in the ocean. Like, in, you know, the wood goes by to show you what's possible for you. And I was like, oh, so we can look at all these things as, like you said, with Facebook. I used to do that too with, you know, friends becoming New York Times bestsellers or whatever. And 
it's driftwood. It's possible. It's on its way to us. Yeah, exactly. And get out of your own way because you, you can be getting in the way of your own blessing coming to you. Yes, yes. By and on this thing, like you're suddenly sending energy in the wrong direction and it's bad. It's so true. And it is, everything really is energy. And I think what we can do is I, I'm, you know, I started to talk more about the law of attraction in, in the book, Joy Seeker. I don't know if you saw that. And so everything's energy. Um, a lot of times with law of attraction, it gets, it sounds really woo woo, but really it's about if everything's energy and has kind of a, a kind of connection, what you think about will become, you know, if we're constantly feeling like I'm not going to have a family and you keep feeling, keeping yourself from it, like you just said, but if you're saying, I see this as possible for me, I look forward to feeling the way my friend does. She just announced her pregnancy. That's a whole different experience. Mm-hmm. If, if anything else, it just makes you feel better than being in lack. Yes, definitely. And I've had to learn how to stop leaning into the lack and really recognize the abundance and be grateful for that and stay here in the present moment, like you've said. Um, I often say the how is the how is in the now too. If there's something you really want, and you know, one of the questions I get asked the most in, in my coaching is, well, how can I get there? How how is it going to happen? How 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 can I feel self love? And if, as long as we're asking how, again, it's keeping it outside of ourselves. But when you say, well, what can I do right now? So maybe I can reach out to a friend. Maybe I can you know research more on the topic of what I want. Maybe I can you know go apply for more jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, anything. Just focus on the now. That's all we have. Yes, definitely. So Shannon, what do you do when you're having a bad day? That's good. Um, I stay in bed and don't get up. No. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I think I've had like one day where I didn't get out of bed over the past like five years. I was just like, I'm staying in bed. Um, no, you should. I have a really good um, process now because I have a a dog who's a rescue dog and he's my therapy in the sense of if I ever have a bad day, I immediately go to a cuddle session with him and I feel better. So it's like if you have kids or or a family member or dog or cat, that love just gets you out of your own way. So that has helped tremendously since I've had him. But also I have a journaling practice where I'll just free write and journal. I also have a two best friends that um, I talk to every day. One of them is my mom. Another one is a a friend that I actually met at a meditation retreat. And we literally will text every day just to say, hi, I love you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, And to have that support right there. So we will call each other and I'll say, hey, I'm not, I'm not doing so good emotionally. And we talk through it. Or my friend, she's always like, do you want me to help or do you want me to just hold space? And some days I'm like, I just need to vent and you hear me. And then almost always my bad days are never bad days. I, I maybe have had one or two bad days because what I do now is look for the moments in those days that are actually worth celebrating or worth being present for in the sense of, okay, today maybe was really bad. I find we wake up and it snowballs like one bad thing, another, another. And I say, okay, well, this just isn't my day. And I stop trying to control it. And then that changes a lot too. I stop trying to control the outcome and just say, okay, well, this is happening. I surrender to it. And that's been, that's been um, a very important thing. The biggest thing for me is the gratitude. That's really transformed my life. Because when I was depressed, every day was horrible. I would cry myself to sleep. I would like be on the bathroom floor in a ball, like shaking. Life was not worth living. Today, it is so different. I'm so connected to myself and purposeful, driven, and passionate about life. Good. So it, it is possible to get there. Yes, definitely. And you know, sometimes on the bad days too, you just kind of have to not take everything so seriously like okay everything's just coming today that's all right I love that too (laughs) yes and I love that you have a smile on your face as you're talking about that because that ultimately there's a lot of humor in the bad days when you can get to a place where you realize you know what this too will pass like I'm not stuck in this instead of feeling like we're stuck in it because that's how the bad days like get worse yeah. Like, this is happening to me. I can't believe it. Like, I think the other day I had um, a flat tire on my car and then I don't know how to change a tire. Like I was like, oh, and I was late for a meeting, a coaching meeting, and it just like parlayed. But I kept a very calm attitude and I found that there were earth angels that showed up. This guy pulled over to say, hey, do you need help? And I was like, 
that showed up out of nowhere because I was in a state of, I am present and I am appreciative. I know that this is not something to freak out. This is just part of life, right? Um, about five years ago or 10 years ago, if I would have had a flat tire, I would have started crying. I would have like been in a completely different place because I would have been focusing on how, how unfair life is, how this is wrong, how I'm just screwed. So it is a different mindset and it changes your outcome. Yes, definitely. And if you were on your way to meet with a client too, um, you know, having, having a positive attitude like that, so that even if, you know, like I was a little bit late this morning too, but you know, showing up, thank you so much for your patience. Um, I, I learned this thing about like, say thank you instead of saying sorry, because sorry is negatively oriented and thank you is positively yeah. oriented. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm um, also, you find that people are really understanding and accepting. It's just about communication. Like when we communicate, I find that one of the um, main things, I dedicated my book to Summer Bacon and Dr. Peebles, my Joy Seeker book, and they're really great teachers for me. And one of the principles that they share is to, in order for humanity to be happier and more accepting, we must in increase communication with each other with respect, but start with yourself. So communicate with yourself, you know, show up for yourself. But I, I wasn't worried at all. You were a little late and I was like, no problem. I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. Like I thought maybe I had the wrong link and it's, that's what we do. And so it's all about communication, but I love what you said about just being grateful and, and gracious instead of being like, I'm so sorry, uh, because that's a frantic energy and nobody needs that. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly who I was before I started this journey. And yeah, like I said, I was walking along my own blessings. Okay, so because you travel, I have to ask you what your favorite destination is that you've visited so far. <laughs> Am I not supposed I'm to laughing. No, I'm laughing because I love this question. Um, yes, I, I travel almost for a full year, and my favorite place was Barcelona. Okay. Have you gotten to the chapter? It's called Everyone Needs a Barcelona. That's why I'm laughing because there's a whole chapter in the book about Barcelona, but it's not even about Barcelona at all. It's about who I became in accepting that Barcelona is the coolest place on earth. <laughs> yes, I did read that chapter because, well, actually, I'm sorry. No, I'm confusing it with the Paris one where people have these really high expectations and then they get there yes. and it's like, this is not... Yeah. Totally. Okay. And so that's exactly it. The, with those tie together because there's a real thing called the Paris syndrome and it's, 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 it's actually a tourist transient disorder. And it started in the Japanese community when they would travel to Paris, they many meant so many actually had such high expectations. It would be the most amazing thing. The Eiffel tower would change their lives that when they went to it, that it was so disappointing because it was not what they thought in their head. So, so many people felt this way. It turned into a transient disorder that actually they've coined the Paris syndrome. Interesting because we do that in our life. We have so many expectations. And so I set out, I asked myself, the whole joy seeker book and experience came from my depression with Tucker when he passed. And I said, well, wait a second. I asked myself, what have you always wanted to do, but haven't given yourself permission to do? Now that's a key thing. Instead of saying, what have you always wanted to do, but haven't? What have you always wanted to do, but don't feel as possible? Permission is the key word. And for me, I said, travel the world uh, full time. So I set out to do that. And four months into my trip, I was feeling very exhausted. And I was thinking, this is not at all what I thought it would be. Because at that point, I was going to every place, every country, checking off. Okay, I saw the Eiffel Tower. Okay, I saw the big waterfall. Okay, I saw. It was like more like a to-do list. And I was doing that in my life. And I, I said, this is not, I cannot keep going at this rate. This is who I've been. This is not who I want to be. And I let go of all expectations. And the very next place I arrived was Barcelona. So I truly feel that Barcelona is extra special in my heart because I had no expectations whatsoever on where it was in my journey. But also it's a very fun place. It's lovely. It's right on the, there's the beach there. It's a big city, great food. I speak a little Spanish, so it was fun to kind of talk to people, you know. Uh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's definitely on my list. Um, I have a friend who's going to take a cruise to 
like they're going all over the place. It's like a 28 day cruise and Barcelona is one of the stops on there and it's in 2021. Awesome. And so I told her, I was like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be with you. That's, I, I don't know how, but I'm going to be with you on that cruise. That's, because That's how it starts though. You say, I'm just going to do it. And then you're already putting that out. It's how it starts. So you'll be there. I see you there. You're having fun. You're in Barcelona dancing as well. Awesome. It's Thank a fun, you. it's a fun place. And I think as far as like um, Europe goes, your money, it's a, it's an affordable place con considering like, like Paris is super expensive, right? Barcelona is a kind of not as much. Um, and most important, it's just, it has a fun vibrancy to it that's youthful and, and playful. And I think that energy is really, have you ever noticed that different places you go, um, there's like a feeling, you know, yeah. like you said, you came to Portland and you felt a feeling. Yes. Love Portland. <laughs> All right. Well, Shannon, is there anything that you would like to leave listeners and viewers with? Anything I think the most important thing is to just connect to yourself by giving yourself permission to be yourself. Um, here's what happens. A lot of times we do that or we say we can't do that because we won't be accepted, but that means we just need to accept ourselves more because there's a freedom in accepting and loving you. It doesn't matter what the world does. Let them be the world. You just keep being you and connect to, to your true source of love and inspiration and your power. Everything will fall in place. Thank you so much. Author Shannon Kaiser. Thank you so much for being a guest. Oh my God. Thank you. It's been great being here. Love you guys all. Thank you. And um, yeah, you can go to play with the world or you can um, joy seeker is my new book and free meditation in there to help you connect and feel peace. It's all, it's all there. It's exciting. Definitely. And I highly recommend to my listeners too. Um, Shannon has one of those social media accounts that's really good to follow. She posts uplifting things, motivational stuff, things that are going to make you feel inspired. So that's a good account to follow at Shannon Kaiser Wright, right? Yeah. Writes is in the author page. So W-R-I-T-E-S. And that's another thing. I know that interview's over, but I feel like social media can be one of those things that makes us compare, makes us feel not good enough. I really am working to create a positive place on the web where we can go and feel like we're a community, feel uplifted and feel love for self. That's really what it is. So if you, if you want more daily inspiration, I would love to connect with you there. And of course, as you see, I'm very accessible. I love answering the comments and reaching out to you guys. Yes. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you. It's been great being here.